drawing curved arrows in chemical reactions. Just to get on the same page, let's review what is the head of the curved arrow and what is the tail. The head is where the arrow ends and the tail is where it begins. There's a set of rules about the head and the tail. Let's look at them. Rule number one is that the curved arrow has to start on a pair of electrons. Either a shared pair, that is in a bond, a sigma bond or a pi bond, or a lone pair, a non-bonding pair. A curved arrow cannot start on an atom. And when we say start, we're talking about the tail of the curved arrow. In this chemical reaction, it's a substitution where the chloride gets substituted for the bromide and so we need two curved arrows here. One of them is nucleophilic attack and the other is loss of a leaving group. So the correct way to draw the curved arrows, the tail of nucleophilic attack starts on a chloride lone pair. The head ends on the alpha carbon of the substrate. That is the carbon where the bromide is bonded. And then we have loss of a leaving group. So the nucleophilic attack changes a lone pair to a sigma bond, and the loss of a leaving group changes a sigma bond to a lone pair. Note that these curved arrows preserve the octet rule. Now you might think you could do something like this to form that bond with the chloride, but look, that curved arrow is starting on an atom. You don't want to do that. Also, it would exceed the octet on the chloride. Also, it never hurts to have all of your lone pairs present. And so you can see that uh, one of the lone pairs on chloride, on chloride became this sigma bond. And one of the lone pairs on the bromide on the right-hand side, let's see, circle it in green, came from this sigma bond. Rule number two, the head of a curved arrow shows either the formation of a bond or the formation of a lone pair. In a proton transfer reaction, we can see both. Here, water is transferring a proton to ammonia. The first curved arrow starts on nitrogen on the lone pair and forms a sigma bond with that hydrogen. So that's forming this bond right here. The second curved arrow starts on the sigma bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen becomes a lone pair on the oxygen. That lone pair. The head of a curved arrow can never show carbon forming more than four bonds. That would exceed the octet rule. You never want to do that. So here we have an ethoxide ion performing nucleophilic attack on the alpha carbon of chloroethane. Now that curved arrow by itself is no good. That's not to say you can't use this curved arrow. It's just that if we did it this way, that would show a carbon with five bonds. Five bonds, you say? I only see three. Right, this would give us
this no problem, right? Well, don't forget the implied hydrogens. So, this cannot happen. However, if we combine this with loss of a leaving group, then we're fine. The loss of the leaving group here breaks that fifth bond and lets us form diethyl ether and a chloride ion. Rule number four. Any curved arrow that you draw should describe one of the four patterns. Remember those? Nucleophilic attack, loss of a leaving group, proton transfer, or carbocation rearrangement. If it's not one of those, then it's probably not right. Now, this curved arrow is no good because it's exceeding the octet on this carbon. However, it could be normal nucleophilic attack if this were a carbocation. So if we had a carbocation here, this arrow would represent nucleophilic attack, and that would give us a ring with one, two, three, four, five carbons. This carbon here that's still circled in red is the one that would end up a carbocation. This methyl group on the end of the molecule here is that methyl group. This methyl group here is this methyl group. And then the pair of electrons represented by the head of the curved arrow went into forming this sigma bond. Here's an exercise. Check each of the curved arrows and see which do not follow the rules. Pause and work, then resume to see the answer. Let's go through step by step. The problem with curved arrow number one is that it starts on an atom. That's bad. It also exceeds an octet. Also very bad. Curved arrow number two exceeds an octet. Curved arrow number three exceeds the octets for both of those. Curved arrow number four, well, this one's okay, but the problem here, you never want to start a curved arrow on a carbocation. Right, starting on an atom is bad. Starting on a C plus is worse. So none of them are good. All of them violate the rules.